you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you find. I do. Have a seat. You don't have to speak directly in the microphone, but you need to speak so the lady on the back row can hear you. Okay. okay. You understand that you're now under oath, and your answer to be sworn answers under penalty of perjury. Yes. All right. You make yourself. Good morning, Cliff. Would you please uh, introduce yourself to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury? Yes, I'm Cliff Dunlap, um, Rankin County. Yeah. Where, where within Rankin County do you work, Cliff? Uh, in the Rankin County Coroner's Office. Okay. And what specifically is your title at the Coroner's Office? Uh, Chief Deputy Coroner. How long have you worked um, there at the coroner's office, Cliff? Been there about 12 and a half years. Okay, when, what year did you start? Uh, 2011. Okay. Um, and as a as the chief deputy coroner, um, what are some of your job duties and responsibilities there at the coroner's office? So essentially we are death investigators. Uh, we respond to any number of deaths that fall under our jurisdiction. Okay. Prior to working at the coroner's office, um, did you work anywhere else? Yes, uh, I've been in the death care industry since 2006 uh, as a licensed mortician. Okay. And what kind of training um, did you go through to become a licensed mortician? So for the mortician, uh, we have an associate's degree in applied sciences, uh, specifically for mortuary science. And before uh, coming to the coroner's office in 2011, between 2006 and 2011, um, where else did you work during those times? Uh, I started out working at Ott and Lee Funeral Home and then uh, subsequently at Mortuary Services after that. Okay. And just kind of not to get graphic or anything like that, but on a day-to-day -day basis, what, what did your job responsibilities include? So we would respond to scenes of death, hospitals, residents. Um, we would take decedents into our care and then provide the services that the family wanted depending on their desires. And so once you came to the coroner's office in 2011, um, what kind of training or education did you have to go through? So we go through a 40 hour initial training uh, that covers the various degrees and the topics that we may encounter on a day to day basis death investigation, family notifications, um, and then we do continuing education uh, on a yearly basis. And how much continuing education is required of someone in the coroner's office? So we're on 24 hours uh, in a calendar year. And uh, just in general, what kind of topics do you typically, uh, you know, what kind of classes do you take as part of your continuing education? It could be any manner of things that kind of fall under the jurisdiction of death investigation, um, you know, scene, recovery, family discussions, um, just all manners that fall under that jurisdiction. As part of your um, training and education, do you sometimes uh, attend and observe autopsies at the state crime lab? Yes, we do. Um, how many? would you say that you've attended or observed since working at the coroner's office? Uh, in my time total, I would say roughly 10 to 15. And speaking of the, the state medical examiner's office, um, tell the ladies and gentlemen how uh, the coroner's office works with the state medical examiner's office or, or if y'all do work with the state medical examiner's office. We do. Um, so under the state medical examiner's office, there are 83 coroners, uh, one for each county and one additional for the Choctaw Reservation. Um, we're basically the eyes and the ears of the medical examiner's office because they're not able to, of course, go out to each individual death per county. So we're, we're kind of their representatives on a day-to-day -day basis and um, we report to them findings. Since starting at the coroner's office in 2011, approximately how many calls would you say you've been on Cliff? Um, Estimated, I would say, at least into the thousands uh, based off of my yearly calls that we work. And again, just kind of generally speaking, why would the coroner's office be called to a scene? So again, for death investigation, um, usually anything that falls under our jurisdiction, natural deaths and unnatural deaths. Okay. And whenever you say unnatural deaths, what do you mean by that? Any death that is not attributable to a disease, natural disease process, um, that can range from suicides, homicides, uh, accidental deaths. Okay. 
And so just again, speaking generally, not, not about this case in particular, whenever you show up to a, to a scene or, or respond to a call, kind of walk us through what your procedure is. So normally we would uh, determine whether or not this was a natural death or not. You know, we, like I said, we cover a lot of different types of cases. Um, of course, we want to make sure that the scene itself is preserved so that we have a very accurate description of how the death occurred. Um, then we would talk to any law enforcement agencies and, and proceed accordingly. And now kind of turning to March 19th of, of this year, 2024, were you uh, employed at the coroner's office um, at that time? Yes. As a chief deputy yes. coroner? Okay. Do you remember receiving a call out to 214 Ashton Way? I do. Okay. And just by way of brief description, tell us where that's located. It's in the Avalon <coughs> subdivision, I believe, off Grants Ferry Road. Okay. Off Old Fannin. Old Fannin, yeah. yeah. Um, and did you respond to, to that address? I did. Okay. Uh, and again, walk us through from the time that, that you got the call out to uh, when you got on scene, what you did. Okay, so when we arrived on scene, we were informed um, that this death was attributed to a gunshot wound. So that let us know that when we arrived on scene to meet with investigators and law enforcement just to make sure that the scene was secure and safe for us to enter into. Once that was established, uh, we made entry into the house. Um, walking into the living room, we went to the left. There were some bedrooms that were located off the living room. Um, at that time, we found Miss Smiley. Uh, she was laying on her back in a supine position, and it appears as though she had suffered gunshot wounds. Okay. Did you uh, conduct an initial investigation of your own to determine uh, anything at that time? Yes, we we wanted to make sure again that scene preservation was of the utmost importance. So we talked to the law enforcement, made sure that you know again it was okay for us to enter into the scene, and that's when we noticed noticed the room that she was in and kind of the surrounding environment. And um, did you uh, did you look at Miss Smiley? Did you observe anything about her body? Yes. Um, upon initial inspection, we did see that she did have two gunshot wounds at the time. You know, we always want to make sure that we present the medical examiner with the most accurate visual possible. So, you know, we, we kind of document what we're looking at, and that's what we initially found were the two gunshot wounds. Okay. Um, so once you did your initial investigation, then what did you do after that? So at that time, we placed Miss Smiley into a white sheet that's used to collect any artifact that may be displaced during the transportation process and then we recovered her from the scene until we took her to the medical examiner's office. Okay, and then did you, as part of your investigation, conduct um, any further investigation into Ms. Smiley's case? Um, at that time, we were waiting on law enforcement and their reports to come in, and then the medical examiner's office would perform the autopsy. Okay, and um, after the medical examiner's office performed the autopsy, um, did you learn anything else about uh, how many gunshot wounds Ms. Smiley had received. Yes. Um, S10 for all purposes and admitted for all purposes by way of stipulation of the parties. Hold on, hold on. Give him the report. Give him the report. No. Yes, you can approach. I just was going to give him the document. Thank you, Your Honor. That's all right. Um, Mr. Dunlap, you were just handed uh, a, a document there. Um, do you recognize that document? I do. And what, what is that? This is our case report that we fill out on every death that we work. Okay. Um, and it appears as though it's three pages. Is that what you have? Correct. Okay. Um, there's If you turn to the last page there, there's a... There's a what says investigator narrative, you mm -hmm. see that? I did. Um, did you write that? I did. Okay, and when would you have um, written that? Uh, that would have been the night of the incident. Okay. Um, and if you, uh, in this case, were you able to uh, make a determination as to cause and manner of death? Yes. 
Okay. Once, um, once the medical examiner's office rule, yes. Okay. Um, if you uh, look on page two or anywhere in this report, is that reflected in this report? Yes. Okay. And what were you able to um, determine as the cause of death? Cause of death was three gunshot wounds to the head. And what about the manner of death? Manner of death was homicide. Cross examination. Mr. Camp, you need the exhibit for cross? Uh, yes, Your Honor. If you would please give it to the bailiff. And the bailiff will give it to Mr. Camp. I, I have a copy, Your Honor. You do have to? Okay. Just want to make sure. I knew I took your only copy. I apologize. Okay, Cliff, and I'm just wanting to make sure I, I understand everything. Mm -hmm. This is what you call your case report, is what is what you have in front of you. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, is is that the only document that is generated by your office? As far as our investigative report, it is. Um, we do initiate the death certificate, of course, for the funeral home at the appropriate time. Okay, and to, I guess, initiate the death report and this case report, you look at other documents is what I'm understanding. Is that correct? Uh, as far as... Well, you said you had, you had talked to the medical examiner's office. Right. That was once the autopsy report was completed and they initiated the cause and manner of death. Okay. Once they do the... Okay. So you're getting information from the autopsy. Correct. Okay. And so that's actually what... That's telling you what the manner of death is. Or correct. Or man, manner of death is. is correct. That correct. Okay, it's not anything you do. Correct. Okay, so you're just getting, it's sort of secondhand information that you get from them and then you put on a piece of paper and then you turn it in. Once they rule on the cause of death, yes, sir. Okay. In here, I was looking on the last page because you said there were, and in in, I guess this would be a case in, in, in point. Mm -hmm. On the last page, page, it has your investigative investigator narrative, and that would be your narrative. Correct. Okay, and it sort of, and it talks about two gunshots, mm -hmm. okay, but then you got more information, I guess, after you did your narrative. Right, correct. Okay, and you didn't go back and edit to, or, or change, or when I say change it, you didn't make a notation that upon getting the autopsy information back, there's actually three gunshots or anything like that, is that correct? Correct. Okay. Would you normally make, because uh, it looks like on the first page, did you say, or you, at some point you, you do say you have, there's three gunshots, is that correct? In the case, or the cause of death, once it was ruled that it was changed to that. Okay. But you didn't change the narrative. Correct. And you didn't, in your narrative, you didn't say anything about once you get the information you're now you know, compiling the report and this is what we're doing. Is that correct? Right. We have a separate report from the medical examiner's office. And so is this one, well, I guess you wouldn't do this case report or you wouldn't finish it until you got the autopsy though. Correct. correct. Okay. No further questions, John. Redirect. Cliff, do you know um, whenever the, uh, you said you sat through some autopsies, is that correct? Correct. Whenever um, the medical examiner uh, gets someone into the, uh, into the crime lab, do they clean that person up? What they do initially is they will do x-rays um, before anything is done to the decedent, yes. Um, do they clean the person up or in any manner? Like During the course of the autopsy, they do. Okay. Uh, is the um, based off what you know personally is the um, is the medical examiner examiner's office uh, can they then do their investigation into the into the decedent at that time as well? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, and you said earlier that the coroner's office is the the eyes and the ears uh, in Rankin County. Is that correct? Correct. 
Um, and again, just to be clear, uh, as, as reflected in your report that's in evidence, um, what were you able to determine was the cause and manner of death? The gunshot wounds. Okay, and what... We're going to object when we approach you. Yes, sir. Cliff, uh, through the laws of the state, are you familiar with the laws of the state of Mississippi as they, um, as they affect the coroner's office? Yes. Okay. And does your office make a determination as to cause and manner of death um, through your normal job duties and responsibilities? In cases that we rule on, yes. Okay. No further questions, Your Honor. Madam witness be finally excused by the state. Yes, sir. By the defense. Yes, Your Honor. All right. You're free to step down. Free. Y'all approach. <laughs> 